короче. Who is moving for the adoption of the agenda? Uh, it's uh, Honorable Mpanza, Chair. Honorable Mpanza is moving for the adoption of the agenda. Can I get a second? Honorable Nkosi seconds. Honorable Nkosi seconded the agenda. Uh, so there are no apologies. Um, the Lubabalo mean why? Uh, please remove the agenda uh, uh, on the screen. Honorable Mpanza. Honorable Mpanza. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus, John, Oh, honorable members, um, honorable uh, greetings to uh, all of you. Um, I see the deputy minister is here with us, honorable uh, Alvin Bautis. And welcome, advocate Mbumloana. Uh, our newcomer in our portfolio committee, Tatum mm -hmm. uh, We welcome you, officially welcoming you uh, to our portfolio committee. Uh, we are happy to have you here. Um, honorable members, uh, we meet again shortly after the National Assembly uh, adopted the portfolio committee's budget vote report. We are well aware that the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted upon the economies of the world. South Africa has not been spared by the situation. The president announced a fiscal package of 500 billion to cushion the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We particularly support his further announcement that 130 billion of the package will be reduced from baselines from national and provincial departments. The opportunity created by the pandemic is that with the unique mandate of the department, we believe that some of uh, your engagements with the world will still occur, albeit virtually. Um, so basically some of your core mandates will still be achieved. This will be despite uh, 317 million being deducted from your baseline. We are therefore mindful that supplementary budget um, sets out the initial economic and fiscal response from government to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have noted that this revision is meant to provide resources to frontline services, provincial and local government as well as business and households with a specific focus on the most vulnerable uh, South Africans. More importantly, it sets out a roadmap to stabilize debt, improve spending patterns, and create a foundation for economic recovery. Uh, Honorable Deputy Minister and, and Minister, it may give you comfort to know that the Portfolio Committee is cognizant of the fact that the leader of government business has directed that the departments should table in parliament in the usual manner their adjusted strategic plans and annual performance uh, plans. We, however, decided that we go ahead with this discussion in the meantime. Parliamentary processes will allow for that formal process to take place before revised budget votes are debated in the House. The department recently reported that uh, the extraordinary summit on the AU silencing the guns and the implementation of the African Convention free trade would be postponed to early uh, 2021. This resonates with our view that the department can still achieve some of its targets. We actually hope that the department will be able to proceed and at the best revised down the uh, fourth quarter targets. Zooming into areas of the revised budget, one notes that goods and services covers most of the activities, which in my assessment, the department has already put on hold during the lockdown period. Honorable members, 
some of the areas covered by the revision have a direct impact on the portfolio committee's recommendations on the budget vote 2020 and 2021. The committee has been consistent in its oversight concerns uh, that the department should prepare ahead and be ready to implement the Foreign Services Act with minimum delays. One area of intensified oversight has been to ensure that the department has the requisite property management strategy and appropriate skills of the built environment. It is important for the department to explain how is it going to navigate in this area. We have noted some positive movements on the ICT issue. The department reported it has started implementing the recommendations from the ministerial and expects a task team towards modernizing the obsolete ICT infrastructure. The plan was to initially procure equipment like laptops, computers, and refreshing the server environment to secure data. With the revised budget um, suspending non-essential spendings on machinery and equipment, how will the department ensure that this plan does not fail through uh, the cracks? In my view, the compensation of employees and the impact of foreign uh, currency fluctuations on the budget of the department remain unresolved, more so with the revised budget. It would be important to understand how the department plans are cushioning, how are the department plans uh, to cushion itself regarding the two items. Honorable members, in my view, some of the targets of the financial year could still be achieved with minimum disruptions. In, in, in any event, a reduced budget does not necessarily translate into a lesser appetite to still continue with international engagements with partners through virtual platforms. Other important performance areas in the department's APP can also still be achieved, such as the following. Review of structured bilateral mechanism, mm -hmm. review on South Africa's membership to international organizations, putting a finger on the pulse of SADC integration and democratic processes such as elections, pursuing economic and commercial diplomacies, delivering on the mandates of South Africa as the AU chair, ensuring the operationalization, operationalization of identified Agenda 2063 flagship projects, operationalization of the Africa Convention on Free Trade and Addressing Conflicts in the Continent with support from the African Renaissance Fund. All these key targets can still be salvaged. Welcome, Minister. Honorable Minister, I therefore invite the department to unpack for the benefit of the portfolio committee how the revised budget will impact on the department's and ARF strategic plans 2020-2025 and annual performance plans 2020-2021 respectively. We are interested to be briefed about how the department intends to still pursue service delivery in the current uh, revised budget scenario. I thank you, uh, honorable members and the minister and deputy ministers. And uh, the team is led by the DG. And uh, now we are going to receive uh, the, 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 the briefing uh, from the department uh, on the revised uh, APP. I'm not sure if the minister would want to uh, input before the department uh, briefs us as the portfolio committee. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Minister. Can you please unmute your mic, Minister? I thought I had uh, my apologies, Chair. I was just saying uh, apologies for joining the meeting late. I was in a UN Security Council meeting 
uh, which is still not over, but I have uh, apologized to them that we have this uh, portfolio committee. I think, Chair, we should allow the department uh, to present. I will uh, join in the deliberations once the presentation is done. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Minister. DG, over to you. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, Honorable Minister, and Honorable Deputy Ministers and my colleagues. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to discuss with the committee how we are adjusting to this new normal. Uh, the pandemic and government response to it is, is expecting all of us to pull together and make it work. And as the minister has just indicated, uh, the chairperson has already indicated, most of the things that uh, we will be presenting here will be revolving around adjustments uh, in quant qualitative rather than quantitative manner. And I will be requesting later as I present that the CFO who is dealing with monies will assist me on the rents and cents part of the presentation. Uh, so that he can then uh, speak to the elements that are affected here. Yeah. Indeed, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable Minister, and Honorable Deputy Minister and members, we are presenting this just a few weeks after we had actually presented the whole strategic plan and the, and the APP. We would like to emphasize the point that um, we are guided by the circular that was issued by the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, which guides how adjustments could be effected. And I will not be long because the bulk of what we presented will, uh, would really remain the same somehow. I'll just indicate where operational matters could be um, affected by the uh, adjusted budget. So uh, the, the department has undertaken a process to consider adjustment to the planned activities to the adjusted budget. Part of the process was to determine how the revised activities will impact on the current targets set out in the strategic plan as well as in the APP. In addition, as I indicated earlier, guidelines from the DPME Circular 2 were considered to determine what adjustments are required following the consultation sessions and indeed taking into consideration the criteria and guidelines. No uh, significant revisions were found to be required for the strategic plan as it is a five-year plan guided by the mandate in which case all those things that were identified as priorities for the department will essentially remain the same. Therefore, there will be no effect on the strat plan itself. It will therefore be the annual performance plan targets in most cases where they lend themselves to activities rather than outputs and outcomes because the outcome will remain what it is intended. However, the milestones towards it, the activities will be impacted here and there by the by the budget um, uh, cards. Uh, I will just jump to the APP maybe, uh, slide number, I believe is seven. Um, to just indicate that, for example, as the honorable chairs correctly identified, one of our most uh, important Outcome, output indicator is the enhanced digital environment. And uh, it could be interesting to note how do we dream to, to reach this uh, uh, important uh, 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 out, outcome, which is intended to improve our organizational functioning in, 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 this, in this manner. So we have made careful consideration to reprioritize our ICT projects that will have significant impact. So the identified ICT's key strategic projects are an imperative to improve operational efficiency consistent with the recommendations that uh, uh, were made by a very 
very um, uh, important task team that the minister set up, which has actually assisted us to even understand the actual uh, uh, root causes of why we have not been able to do certain things. So the, as we indicated in our previous submission that there are short term, medium to long term issues that were identified there. Then, so it is even much more critical in the wake of COVID-19 where the department has to leverage on technology to ensure business continuity. So in so far as this is concerned, at the last uh, column there where we indicate in the implications of the reduced budget and the response to this working environment, we note that especially infrastructure modernization is a significant building block of the tra digital transformation uh, journey. And I must indicate, we already have in the horizon, we targeted to have a digital strategy at the end of the financial year. I must really be, uh, I'm pleased to announce that we already have a, 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 what I can call a model digital strategy, which is guiding us. And in this case, we will be able to cost it up, uh, appropriately to ensure that the infrastructure modernization is done in, in, as a multi-year uh, uh, project of whose funding can be spread over the mid, uh, the, the, the MTF. So uh, the whatever changes would come from this budget item should be able to enable us to acquire the basic uh, equipment and then uh, start us to, to zoom us in into modernizing our, our network and the data center. And we believe um, uh, with the assistance of our finance team led by the CFO, we will make sure that we dare not lose the advantage no matter how cuts were made to ensure that this is achieved because it is the fulcrum, I believe, of what will enable us to achieve the other um, out, I mean, uh, uh, um, targets because we, the, 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 the new normal dictates that we will move away from the traditional contact diplomacy to oh. an e-diplomacy. And in that context, this very key focus area will not have to fail. So in this case, on, in program one, I may just have to emphasize the fact that we are mindful of what this entails and on, on, uh, uh, in our budget process, in our revision, we ensure that the basics are put in place. Therefore, we should be able to still achieve the, the most immediate. And as I said, now that we have a, 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 a draft strategy, with very clear milestones and very clear uh, uh, um, entry points, we could be in a position to use to, to achieve more with less. Basically, on, on, on most of the uh, issues around program one, as they are mostly standard and which may not lend themselves directly to the effect of budgeting, as I indicated in a previous sitting that we are a human resource intensive uh, 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 employer, and therefore we depend on the human resources. And as, as we will know that um, um, uh, uh, in compensation, we have a, a little challenge. However, we would we believe that with the staff that we have, we'll still be able to achieve the goals for the department. So going forward, in as far as, um, other elements of program one, for example, the the mainstreaming of of, of 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 gender, youth, and people with disabilities, with the honourable committee has emphasised a lot, even in our presentation of the quarter report from the previous MTSF, we are still believing that um, we, we 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 will be able to work around it, and then ensure that we use alternative platforms. And, and one of which I've just indicated to ensure where contact is, sessions can be held to ensure that we, we do not fail in that area. So this uh, adjustment have also taught us
to do things differently than we would normally have done them. And in as far as the implementation of the Foreign Service Act, we 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 are we are we are, we are working on the implementation plan to ensure that the act uh, comes into force. We have already worked out a plan with milestones, and we believe it does not get affected because uh, mostly the targeted time by which it will be coming on would be later in the in the in, in the financial year or. Or, or, or the, the things that may have cost implications could only take shape after the financial year in question. So we believe that uh, this may not be a problem so far, but we, 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 we will work to ensure that we stay within what we have. On program two, honorable members, honorable minister, as the, uh, the, the honorable chairs already in her re uh, opening remarks actually, uh, uh, preempted me, if I may use the word. Indeed, the, re the revisions of these mechanisms uh, are things that uh, are, 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 are done by people, and therefore they should not very much be affected. And, and I believe it, it is work in progress that we will still be able to work on. Uh, without wasting the time of the committee, I will indicate that whatever we are talking about is on the last column where it talks about output indicators and targets where we indicate upfront that they remain appropriate and they remain within. And only those areas that um, will be affected by uh, a target the, where we targeted, for example, uh, in quantitative forms could uh, essentially be the uh, on a case by case, we could uh, say they might lend themselves to some little um, hiccups in case we are not able to source the necessary services as a result of the reduced uh, goods and services budget. So essentially, honorable members, we are submitting that we, we will be trying by all means with very minimal disruptions based on the fact that the whole quarter one as we, we, it ended up this week would have been uh, see I mean would have witnessed a situation where most of the earlier targeted uh, milestones may have been delayed by this uh, this new normal mm. We will still uh, 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 meet our obligations to to fulfill the, I mean the, them. Um, uh, there may be there may be adjustments not of this nature now that could come at the time when we the whole uh, the whole mechanism of the medium term strategic framework led by the Department of um, Planning and Monitoring monitoring. Maybe somewhere we might have to tweak certain uh, aspects, but for the purpose of today's discussion, based on the budgetary adjustments, we still believe that um, we will try to stay within. In as far as the de delivering on the strategy for the AU chairship, which is the main uh, issue for this year, we are continuing to deliver on this deliverable as the AU chair. We, you will be noting when we present quarter one, we'll be reporting quite a sizable chunk of achievements as a result of the fact that we adapted very, our principles adapted very quickly to the e-platforms and ensure that the work of the AU in particular is carried out without a, a lot of disruptions. And engagements are still taking place on virtual platforms, as we indicated. So reduced budget implications are absorbed through the reduced travel, which does not necessarily imply reduced international um, engagements. However, it is the method that has changed. That's why we emphasize the fact that we need to fast track our modernization so that it will not be on a hit and miss basis, but on a very predicta predictable platforms. And um, essentially, honorable members, 
I have come to the end of the, uh, the performance part of the APP uh, with the emphasis that um, um, we will explore alternative platforms to implement most of our strategies. And, and while we will know that it may not be very, very easy, but we will try our best. I will now hand over to the CFO to just uh, take the committee in, uh, into the elements of the financial resource plan, the actual adjustment or supplementary budget, which will, among others, talk to some of the things that I've indicated. With the permission of the Honorable Chair, may I defer to the CFO to talk to the brands and sense. Over to you, CFO. Is the CFO sleeping? TG. Sorry, Chair. And uh, good, uh, good evening, Honorable uh, Chair, and good evening, Ministers and Honorable Members. Uh, my presentation will be short uh, in terms of the reduction that the department has implemented as it has been communicated uh, through National Treasury, that we had to respond to the call by the President in terms of contributing to the 130 billion uh, in terms of this package that uh, needed to be identified from the baseline. So the department has then identified areas that will then not necessarily impact negatively on the APP, uh, which is basically on the goods and services. 110 million was then identified, in, uh, as well as the capital uh, infrastructure budget, which then amounted to 277 million, uh, respectively. So all these activities were then realigned in order to then uh, be performed within the available budget, which is then reduced, uh, where in a hybrid system was then uh, used, which we are witnessing the virtual meetings that are currently taking place, which will then ensure that the plans are then achieved. But we still have minimum co contact that will still uh, perform in terms of the work of the department. So in terms of the uh, figures, uh, the adjusted budget that we are now tabling uh, into before this committee under administration, we then had a budget of 1.7 billion, and the adjustment that had to be effected is 214 million, and then our adjusted budget then reduces to 1.5 uh, billion, which then represents 12 percent. And the other part is international relations. The adjustment is 83 million, which then uh, come to 3.2 billion under program two. And under program three, the reduction is 10 uh, million, which then uh, come down to 526 million. And the public diplomas which, and state protocol, which is our program four, the reduction is 8 million. Uh, and the adjusted budgets will then come down to two, 329 million. And our transfer payments, there was no any adjustment in terms of the listed uh, uh, transfer payments that we need to make. Uh, as I indicated, the cuts were mainly on the goods and services and capital. Uh, under compensation employees, there was no any cut that was affected. And the total amount under goods and services is 109 million. And the capital uh, budget is 206 million, which then I will uh, elaborate in the next slide in terms of the uh, breakdown of the cuts that we implemented. Next slide, please. Yeah, in terms of the, uh, as I indicated, the, the program one, which take, took the bigger part of the adjustment, uh, it relates to the 119 million uh, for infrastructure project. Uh, which now we've then uh, delayed, which I'll talk to it in the later uh, slide. And uh, the other part is has to do with the travel that we normally do in a normal course of the event in terms of the our principles uh, in the engagement. But this is not saying that there won't be any contact in the future. But in terms of what we have then identified that we can live within is 15 million. And in terms of the... Uh, capital budget, 
uh, there was no any adjustment made on the budget for ICT. So the ICT budget remained as we had presented uh, in the last uh, tabling of the budget. So it's only the deferral of the replacement of cars where we can able to do uh, without with the current existing fleet, as well as the mi minimum reduction on capital for furniture and equipment that we can do without in terms of the replacement that we've scheduled. Under program two, as I indicated, that the major part is basically on the travel as well as the celebration of activities that the mission carried out in a normal course of event where we then celebrate the Freedom Day on a yearly basis on the 27th of April. So that has passed and we then identify as an area that we can then contribute to the 130 billion that has been identified and international uh, cooperation is basically the 10 million that we then also in, indicated in terms of the traveling, which is basically the, the program that uh, carried out activities that relate to the UN as well as the AU in terms of the virtual meeting that have been introduced. Uh, then the 10 million was then identified as a reduction that can be accommodated within the baseline. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Who's moving the slides? Yeah, uh, the, uh, sorry, Chair, the program four, as I indicated, uh, the nine million has been identified as the amount that can be re reduced in terms of the public diplomacy, in, in terms of outreach program, as well as the traveling of the support staff that travel with the executive. And uh, lastly is the state protocol uh, in terms of the the uh, amount that was set aside, a minimum, minimum amount for the hosting of the AU summit uh, that was planned in May. So we have not received the uh, new date in terms of that process. And the other part we also review in terms of the additional work that uh, the consular services is providing uh, in terms of the assistance that we have in terms of repatriation is the amount that we requested for environment in terms of the budget. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the reprioritization in terms of the capital infrastructure uh, re uh, relates to the uh, Foreign Service Act, which was asserted to by the president of the uh, 6 uh, May, uh, which then afford uh, the uh, the responsibility, the custodianship of the immovable asset outside the Republic to our minister in terms of Section 9 of the Act. And in, in that, we then look at and see what are the issues that we need to do, which then the deferral of the project as was agreed in terms of giving more opportunity to then address to the recommendations that the portfolio committee indicated to the department, which then will allow the minister to then look at the development of the property acquisition and maintenance and disposal strategy, and also to identify sources of funding and develop a financial model that will then assist the department to achieve uh, on this area, and including the establishment of the construction and built environment and project management team as the the work that will be done in order to then have a strategy that will then respond to the recommendation uh, by the portfolio committee. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair, and thank you, members. Uh, DG? That, uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Th that was the departmental uh, plans, and then uh, I believe today we also have uh, the ARF, uh, maybe as a last resort, since the committee said in future we will be doing the the ARF separate. separate. The, this was all about the departmental plans and the adjust, adjustments that we are proposed, proposing, honorable members. Um, DG, can we take the ARF so that we, we discuss um, at both presentations at once? Thank you, Honorable Chair. 
I will also be assisted on the finances by the Secretariat. We, 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 we can go to slide number four. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, the, um, the, the slide number four, that is actually where the actual plan is, is, is we're speaking about it, which indicates what was, what is in the plan. And I must indicate from the wet call that we have submitted the, uh, the actual re uh, formal request for the uh, uh, revision of the plans as, as since somewhere we have completely uh, not uh, been able to to have the plans as they were initially intended. But I want to indicate, Honorable Chair, that um, of course, as we, even in the remarks, it was indicated uh, there is a one project uh, on the plan that is under consideration in support of our of, of the operationalization of the AS, ACFTA. And we are anticipating that we may be requested to come up with uh, technical assistance for elections observer missions in the, to be held in the third quarter of the financial year. And perhaps there could even be one more uh, project on the prevention and resolution of conflict in the process. And therefore, this some, uh, indicates that uh, all what we said when we were taped, I mean, we were briefing the committee uh, about 100%. We were basing it on, on, on the fact that at the time of the strategy, I mean, of the APP development, we anticipated that everything will be done in the manner it was uh, planned. And as a result, um, we, we want to submit that there will be modifications about the, the the changes of targets as affected by the pandemic and the fact that um, uh, in some cases, even the very election observer that we fund, some of which have uh, to be put forward and one that has already taken place recently in which, of course, we, there was no, uh, we were not able to participate in due to the very same um, uh, uh, pandemic. I would like to, in the interest of time, to defer to the Secretary just to talk to the elements of the plan as they pertain to the, uh, to the adjustments and the financial implications thereof. I would like to invite uh, Ms. Dineo Mataku to summarize, because it is not really much, uh, it is just to indicate, to be very specific to those areas that are lending themselves to the adjustments that we have been proposed, which ended up with us having to revise the plan. With, the, with your permission, Honorable Chair, may I invite uh, Ms. Dinell Matlabo to yes. just take the call? Yes, thank you. You know. um, thank you, DG. Good evening, Chairperson. Good evening, Minister, Deputy Ministers, and Honourable Members. Um, as the DG has can already... We have, can we have your camera on? <laughs> um. <laughs> Are you technologically challenged? Next to the mute button, there's a there's a camera. Then you click on it, and then we see you. Where is Dineo DJ? Dineo, please plug. The Good <laughs> evening, honourable <laughs> chair and. Yeah. Yes. We, we can are see. still implementing our IT strategy, Chair. 
<laughs> I can see. Good and evening, you know, Honourable Chair and Honourable Ministers. Yeah. And Honourable Deputy Ministers and uh, Honourable Members. As the DG has indicated, um, we have revised the targets on the APP on um, for the 2020-2021 financial year. And there has been, our budget has not been revised. Uh, we still have the allocation that we had of 48 million. And starting with the first target, the percentage of static election observer missions um, that are funded for DERCO, um, the current target will be at 75%. Um, as DG had indicated, there were four elections that were budgeted for, and um, one has already occurred in Malawi, and there was not an election observer team sent. And we currently have three elections that are scheduled for the third quarter. And we were requested to keep them on the schedule because travel restrictions might have been amended uh, at that time. And moving on to the next target, the percentage of technical assistance to support election funded. Under this target, um, there are currently two projects that are anticipated. And it is anticipated that both of them will be approved in, uh, and executed in the third quarter. And on the third uh, target, percentage of institutions promoting good yeah. governance funded. Um, we have not put, a, a target has not put for that particular uh, outcome uh, because we think that in the 2020-2021 financial year, we will not undertake projects in that area. Uh, moving on to uh, moving on to the next target, uh, the outcome indicator of percentage of mediation and resolution uh, of conflicts for projects funded. Um, there is one project that is targeted for the second quarter, and uh, we believe that project will be approved and executed within the second quarter. And moving on to the next target, uh, the percentage of projects to provide support to the operationalization um, of the FCTA funded, which was one of our main focus for the current financial year. There is currently one project under consideration, and uh, we believe that project will be executed in the third and the fourth quarter. And we would still need um, our target to have a, pro a legacy project for South Africa in that particular area. Percentage of projects to support socioeconomic development and integration. Um, we believe that after the, uh, the COVID uh, outbreak of COVID-19, that there will be a lot of countries that will, uh, whose economies would need to recover and a bulk of our budget will be allocated to this particular area. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, looking at the percentage of projects to support um, percentage of projects to support humanitarian assistance. Um, with the outbreak of COVID-19, humanitarian assistance has been a huge focus for us uh, in quarter one. And I think when we do our quarter one reporting, we will report all the projects that were funded under that target. Um, which has, has been a big focus in the first uh, quarter of the year for the ARF to assist uh, countries on the continent to deal with the outbreak of COVID-19. And we also believe that in the second quarter, we will still do a bulk of projects that support um, humanitarian assistance also in response to the outbreak of COVID-19. And the next target on the, on the percentage of capacity, bu capacity building in human resource development. Um, for this particular target, uh, there's a project that uh, is, has been anticipated for the second quarter um, to support the development of women. And we believe that the project will be executed and implemented within the second quarter of the year. And on our last target, uh, the cooperation uh, percentage of cooperation projects with other countries funded, 
Um, there has been no target set for that particular uh, indicator because uh, most of the discussions on cooperation projects with other partners have been suspended and most of them will resume in the second quarter. And we believe that those projects will materialize in the 2021-2022 financial year. Uh, Tepes, and that comes to the end of the adjustments that we have on the APP. Uh, thank you very much. Um, is that all, DG? We submit, Chair. That's all for today from us. Okay, thank you very much. Honorable members, can I get an indication of uh, hands which are interested uh, in inputting? Um, uh, so you are unable to raise your hands on the system still. I see Honorable Msane has raised her hand on the system. So Honorable Bachman, now you have jumped the bandwagon of people who are unable to raise their hands on the system. Jesus. Uh, I see Honorable Msane, Honorable Bachman, Honorable Muela. Honorable Ngozi, Honorable Mushwe, eh, Honorable Mushwe, who else? Honorable Mpanza. And Eva, Mama? And you said, Celebrate and get on Colang Shake, Zabin Boy. When I'm on Zumune, they were with a later when. So, eh, Honorable Mzane, in that order. Honorable Msana, you can unmute your mic. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you for the presentation from the department. Um, I think one of the major concerns which the chairperson also raised was this uh, foreign exchange fluctuations with regards especially to the compensation of employees, which we have seen happen. We know that the budget has not been re reduced on the compensation of employees, but uh, how will the department then be able to meet uh, its 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 demand with regards to the compensation of employees and the exchange rates? And then we had requested chairperson for the documentation to be submitted with regards to the property management strategy team to back up what information was given to us by the department because we were looking specifically for a certain profession to manage uh, this foreign service bill uh, property that has now fallen into the hands of the department. I'm wondering if we have received any backup documents for that, um, for those skills. And then, uh, how will the department chairperson be able to upkeep its properties abroad with regards to rentals and because we can see that the budget has been cut? And then on the issue of uh, the ARF, I see uh, it's, it's a continuous highlight that uh, there's a project which is under consideration for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Can we please be given a, 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 just a highlight on, on what this project is and what does it seek to do so that at least we can also look forward to it, noting that uh, the, the African continental free trade could not be launched at the date that it was going to be launched. And then I saw on page 12 of the ARF um, capacity building on the presentation that was made in May, it was at 10% and currently it's reflecting at 100%. If we can be highlighted, uh, what type of capacity building has taken place to date to move this, um, this uh, target to 100%. And then, Chairperson, with regards, maybe Minister can assist. Uh, we requested a Minister in our previous meeting uh, for an intervention with regards to the Israel mission, that it be closed down 
So maybe Minister can give us a way forward on a political direction on what was decided. And then we noted also that uh, South Sudan minister has been removed from the AU body, which is very sad because of uh, outstanding uh, funds. Can we be highlighted on what is that situation and how will it in affect this AU body? Because our mm. mission, honestly, is that we are working towards Africa United. And it's very sad to see a country like South Sudan fall out of the bandwagon when Af South Africa, as part of the ARF interventions, we are assisting South Sudan to a certain extent. And then there's a burning issue, Minister, with regards to this ISIS in, in Mozambique, which now is threatening South Africa. And by threatening South Africa, it's not only threatening South Africa, but it's threatening the body of SADC. Uh, what plans do we have in place as SADC uh, to, to actually fight and intervene and stop these terrorist bodies from, um, you know, they are against progress because if you check what's happening in Mozambique, they are at the, the gas, where, where, where gas projects are happening. So what, what role is SADC going to play? And are we going to get any assistance from the AU RET, if possible? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Honorable Msane. Honorable Bachman. Chair, thank you very much. Um, just on the Israel issue, I would like to make a passionate plea that uh, season's open for ambassadors and I'm sure that no one's lining up to go to Israel at this stage as an ambassador. And I do believe that, uh, Honorable Minister, that uh, I do have the right credentials to help with the peace plan. So please, if you're looking for someone that does want to go and be an ambassador, um, you can consider me <laughs> if you just want to whisper in the president's ear. But because, um, I mean, I really do believe that South Africa needs to try to bring about peace in the Middle East, and I think we can do it especially after I addressed the Palestinian and um, Arab Women Forum today on the gender diversity. But if I can also just say some good news happened today. South Africa, through me, was um, elected vice chair of the Democracy, Governance and Human Rights um, Committee. And so that, that was also, I think, a good win for us. But just to ask, um, Chair, you might remember that a few months ago in one of our sessions, I asked the DG about the midterm reviews in terms of us going to the CFO and his team having to travel to London or to Dubai, I think it was Dubai, to have these reviews, when in actual fact, they've been held before. I know that in, in time before they've been cancelled due to budget constraints and in at another time they've actually been held in Pretoria for budgetary constraints and this time it was actually held in those regions. Now we've obviously seen with COVID that we could save money by actually using the likes of Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Now again most meetings that are taking place mission to mission are taking place through Zoom and not actually taking place with through travel. And uh, I'm sure the CFO is getting an understanding now that we could save a lot of money through using Zoom and not having to get a whole lot of people traveling mission to mission, cross country or cross world, cross globe, to get to another destination. Or if need be, that we can all converge in Af in South Africa where we actually have the venue, no, you know, known as uh, the OR Tambo building. Um, in terms of the, um, the handover from public works, when was that actually affected? Because I'm surprised to see that we've already taken custodianship of the handling of the properties abroad. Um, I'm sure uh, I'd be surprised if we've already taken custodianship of all the Namibian properties and if we're already responsible for the maintenance of those properties and public works is not because that's that's probably uh, you know 
that's a poison chalice. And if that's coming from our budget, I would hope that Public Works has, has donated some of their budget to us as well. In terms of repatriation money that the CFO had spoken about, where has Turco had to use repatriation money? Because a lot of the time uh, on the SAA flights and that there's been sponsorship, there's also been uh, Treasury has, has put a lot of money into the repatriation. Now we're going into what's probably the back end of repatriation. So we've got probably what's, I'd hate to term it because it sounds bad, but we've got the leftovers. Um, people that are stranded now that would probably not get flights until the commercial flights are open to them. And um, people that would probably require expensive flights to get to South Africa. And this is probably the time that they will require a budget from Durko if there is such budget. And I would ask the CFO if there is any such plans to use uh, such monies to subsidize or to allow um, people stranded to sign acknowledgements of debt now, because SA has stopped what you had started in terms of acknowledgements of debt. And I think it would be a great help for those that are stranded. We've got people with babies that have that can hardly feed their children, that cannot get on airplanes because they cannot afford the airplanes. And if we've got that budget, and if we can get our citizens to sign these acknowledgements of debt, I'm sure it would, I'm sure it would be a great, uh, you know, great assistance. And then I'd just like to um, piggyback on my colleague of Sane's, um submissions on both ISIS and uh, Egypt and South Sudan. Both on the, on the terrorism issue, we do have the timing is obviously leads itself to opportunism because if if we got the COVID crisis and our budgets are already wary, as I say, with regards to terrorism, we spend our our budgets start becoming heavier on the defence uh, points of view and then less on social social development type of um, you know type of budget. So there's more on defence and less on resources such as education or housing. And this is the kind of problems that we face. And if we don't attack it now, and now we've just had the threat from ISIS that says that if you, if South Africa dares to come and and start on, on in Mozambique, that they'll open the door to terrorism in South Africa. And that's obviously not something that's, you know, although it might not dent the crime statistics in South Africa, you don't want to open up to, you don't want to open up to these new types of, of, of terrorism in South Africa because, you know, once it starts, it's going to be very difficult to stop. But in terms of Egypt, we have a great opportunity from the UN Security Council side and from the African Union side to ensure that uh, we, we, we land an agreement between South Sudan and, and Egypt to ensure that uh, with the Nile, as I said last time, that, uh, I, sorry, as I say, you know that that that, that yeah, we 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 look we we look like the we look like the deal makers, and and you know on Friday night, when you're sitting with an airplane from from Egypt that was meant to take off, we, we nearly just caused another diplomatic spat, and I'm just hoping that from, from north to south, that we're 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 looking more responsible and more amenable to, to how we play our chairmanship in the African Union to all the countries. And that we look more, you know, that we're looking more as the parent and less as the child when coming to how we treat countries in the African Union. Thank you very much. Honorable Muela. Honorable Chair. Um, good evening, Honorable Chair. Greetings to the leadership of the department, Honorable Minister, Mamna Lady, and the Deputy Ministers. Honorable Chair, um, once more in your opening remarks, you have sanitized us with many issues, which I think were very crucial. 
as you were giving us um, a remark in your opening uh, address, which I cannot uh, enter into that space because already you have raised a number of issues as far as this uh, program is concerned. Honorable Chair, one or two issues. Let me first uh, commend the department um, and uh, appreciate the report presented to us, both reports, the ARF and the report of the department, which I think uh, to me, Honorable Minister, there is a progress uh, uh, so far. I think I must acknowledge that, that there is a progress. And we really appreciate that uh, as as as, uh, um, as 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 this committee. Now, DG, you have raised one matter that I think is critical, uh, which I think uh, we need to attend to that matter, the issue of the ICT, uh, as you were presenting. And let's appreciate that the Honourable Minister was able to uh, establish a task team that will deal with issues of ICT in that department. And I hope one day we are going to have a, a report on our minister so that we can know exactly as to how far are we in terms of this matter because we've been raising it for a long time. And we appreciate that for now, there is a task team that is handling the matter. Now on the issue of unqualified audit opinion, I think honorable uh, members and the DG, I just want to check uh, as per your presentation if, uh, because you have said internal controls are in place and, in, and the, uh, you are in a process of managing it, you have put in place some of the processes, control measures, and so on. For now, are there any alarming areas which you can probably alert us as, co as the committee? If there are any alarming areas, please let us uh, know. The issue of property management strategy, I think Honorable Msane, uh, I can see today uh, she has put her lipstick, um, um, uh, Honorable Msane, I can see you have put on your lipstick today. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good uh, progress. Well done, keep it up. Uh, you have raised that matter, I won't again raise it, uh, Honorable Chair. Lastly, on the issue of uh, program one, program three, and four, DG, are there any implications probably of the re uh, reductions that can affect these programs? If there are any uh, uh, um, uh, uh, reduction um, uh, implications and so on that can affect these programs. That's my submission for now, Honorable Chair. Thank you so much. Good night. Uh, Honorable Nkosi. Uh, Thank you, Chairperson. Um, firstly, a, a general comment on the African Free Trade Continental Agreement. We have noted uh, that the starting date as we move from the 1st of June, I think, to the 1st of January 2021, because primarily because people can't travel to the center, which is in Ghana, I think. Uh, my, my, my question there is uh, how ready are we as a sovereign state to assist in ensuring that um, the agreement is, is, and, the, and its protocols are put into effect. Again, also in relation to that, I, I think the issue that the operation, technical assistance for the operationalization of the AFTCA is done through the African Renaissance, Renaissance Fund may be a misnomer. We may need in future to make this an integral part of our budget and budgeting process so that it is elevated to a program of the department rather than being taken as an ad hoc uh, aspect. I think this is the, the the diplomatic or international relations part of it. The implemented much of the implementation happens through other departments, particularly trade and industry. DG, 
the reprioritization occasioned by CODIF uh, uh, COVID-19 happened at a time when you were requested by National Treasury to do reprioritization. I think we should not lose fact, sight of that fact that the reprioritization in line with our new focus in the MTF, S, MTSF uh, should not uh, fall through. But it is interesting that through reprioritization, we've been able to cut costs on travel, subsistence, accommodation, and attendance of conferences. Will this in future form part of what we focus on uh, as part of uh, cutting costs, particularly if we move, as we have said, to e-diplomacy rather than contact diplomacy? Um, <clears throat> Related to that is, is whether the fact that you are not able to travel, uh, does it impact on your, the delivery of your mandate okay. as a department? On payment of capital assets, which is one of the areas that we reprioritize, my, my, I, I think it's 199 million that has been set aside for CODI from those programs. Uh, they've got two categories. My concern is on the suspension of foreign spending. I mean, spending on foreign capital infrastructure. Uh, my, my, my question is, if this is done, has there not been commitment to third parties already, which may in turn come back to sue us? That's the first part of the question. The second part of the question is in relation to South Africa. What is the impact of your suspension of these activities and taking money to COVID uh, on small business uh, uh, that with which you do uh, with which you engage in the country, I think the points have been made on ICT. My concern is um, to what extent is the model will, will the modernization program be impacted by this cut if it is in relation to uh, Purchasing of new laptops, telephony, et cetera, lab, and, and desktops is fine. But if it goes to the core of ensuring that there is, there is e connection and e creation of e platforms, and you cut that part, which is uh, essential, it will, it will create a, a problem. I think the point on foreign exchange um, fluctuations has, has been made, Chair, and I, I don't need to make it. Just for, for the future, DG, I think with, with the National Treasury saying that we're moving towards zero-based zero budgeting, there are very serious implications uh, for this uh, 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 going forward. Now, this 317 mil that is being suspended to, for these emergency purposes, uh, will we be able to argue to to National Treasury that this money in the outer years of the MTF may be, uh, be returned to achieve similar objectives. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Mushoe. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I have been largely covered by my colleagues. In the interest of time, I'm not going to repeat uh, some of the questions I want to raise. The only one that maybe I should comment on or raise now is on the issue of prioritization. And as it is part of the mandate of this committee to ensure that there is peace and democracy sustained on the continent. Now the threat, uh, Babun goes. Um, the threat that, yeah. The threat that is near our borders, um, the border which with Mozambique is a great concern because if ISIS has made the threats that have been reported, instructing South Africa to stay out of the conflict, um, they might sabotage everything that this department would be promoting on the continent. So I want to know why that situation is not prioritized 
because they will destabilize um, peace in areas on the continent. And we know that democracy does not succeed where there are conflicts. So my question is why it is not prioritized and, uh, and why also with, within these priorities, there was no allocation for mediation and conflict resolutions. Thank you. Honorable Mbanza. <clears throat> thank, uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, first of all, let me uh, greet uh, the leadership of the department, the minister, and uh, our deputy ministers. Chair, first of all, I want to align myself with your opening uh, remarks. Uh, I think they were spot on. And I think uh, <clears throat> the department should take note of the areas that were raised uh, in those uh, opening remarks. Uh, on, on the issue of the ICT, I think uh, my colleagues have uh, covered me on that one, but safe to just remind the DG that in our previous meeting, committee meeting, uh, we gave him uh, a time frame of three weeks. And I think uh, he is working around that time frame because uh, we felt that uh, it can be an open-ended uh, thing. Uh, we want to see what plans are put in place in actually addressing the ICT issues. The Foreign Service uh, Act, first of all, I think, uh, <clears throat> let me thank... Uh, the executive led by the minister. We have been sitting to on, on, on the minister on this one. In fact, I have been a thorn uh, on her flesh. And I think uh, now <clears throat> it has been uh, achieved. And uh, also, if she can also convey uh, our appreciation to the president uh, <clears throat> in that uh, now we are now going to uh, use this uh, as a way of uh, implementing uh, our mandate uh, as, a, as a committee uh, working together with ministry and the department. But Chair, I just want to check. Um, the DG said that then they will be uh, implementing uh, the Foreign Service Act. I just wanted to ask the DG that can we have a, a plan, please? Uh, in terms of uh, the implementation of this act, and can we also have uh, specific time frames uh, so that we will be able to monitor uh, its implementation? On a follow up uh, on the issue that was raised by Honorable Ngosi uh, on the cut of foreign uh, projects, I just want to check uh, what, what criteria was, be, was used by the department. Uh, to say we cut this one, uh, we will leave this one. Uh, because <clears throat> uh, they might be uh, in their own wisdom think that that one is more important, but as a committee, we might think the one that they have cut is the one that is more relevant uh, in terms of uh, implementing uh, uh, the mandate. Of course, on the issue chair of uh, savings in terms of international travel, uh, conferences, all of that, I think that that, that is uh, understandable. But now I want to check, we are now using visual meetings and there are definitely cost implications. Uh, we might be having savings on this one, but we might be incurring expenses on that one. So if they can tell us that how much uh, is a visual meeting is costing us. Maybe today they might not have the exact figures, but but if they can just uh, give us a rough indication uh, as to <clears throat> uh, the fund, uh, the the cost, or maybe the financial implications uh, of of that one. And then, thank uh, Chairperson. Uh, we will, uh, we have noted the presentations and they are very good and I want to echo mm -hmm. what uh, uh, some of the colleagues said. We are seeing much uh, improvement 
uh, in the department. And that is why the meeting is running very smooth today, uh, because uh, <clears throat> they've really, really uh, pulled up their socks. And then I think uh, the credit uh, must be given to them, uh, because we must give credit where credit is due and criticize when we have to criticize. We will monitor the plan. Uh, um, Honorable Berkman, what did you do to Honorable Chetty? Why is he no longer attending our meetings? What's, what's the issue? Hmm? You people... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going, hmm? to have to... <laughs> I'm going to have to have a word with him. <laughs> hmm. Honorable uh, DG, can you respond, please, with your team? Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, we thank you, the Honorable Committee, for for the, its oversight, assisting us to to really um, dig deeper into our own understanding of the work we do. I will start off with the question that was at the beginning that talks to South Sudan. Uh, I can only report that South Sudan is only suspended because of failure to pay its dues, but still remains a member state, which can unfortunately not participate as per the Constitutive Act. And then uh, we believe that they will overcome and be able to to, to to meet the obligation. Um, the other question, I will skip this one, on, um, on but to indicate that um, the question on midterm reviews, indeed, um, actually, a decision has been taken to abandon or rather to cancel those. But even the current situation has actually, we have learned a lot out of the, the this current situation we are in, that uh, you can do much virtually. And we believe it was the right time and the committee is correct in its observation. And I believe that uh, the current platforms will save us a lot because as we said previously, the contact mode of our work has been done in the manner that it was, but we have then got awakened to by the fact that uh, when things like what is happening now happen, they, they really close us down on that one. So rest assured that um, uh, this uh, 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 thing will no longer be there. The ICT, I did in my presentation uh, uh, indicate at the beginning there that, and the CFO also added to that, that uh, everything is intact to get all what is, has been recommended for us to do to, to happen with the available uh, funds. The report that uh, the member has referred to after internal processes, obviously as part of our account, accountability uh, 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 I mean, mechanism, we should be able to, to share with the committee at an appropriate time when all the internal processes have been taken through to ensure that we share the, 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 the outcome with the Honourable Committee. The reference to the uh, uh, unqualified audit opinion, there has been some disruptions on the audit of the department. The preliminary indication has woken us up because it showed us the areas that were already being seen at the beginning when the audit was started in mid-February, unfortunately, 
had to stall uh, at the onset of the COVID pandemic as well as the subsequent um, uh, lockdown. We have had interactions with the AG. They have rescoped uh, the uh, this new engagement letter and audit strategy, and our indications on those in be it cash and cash equivalents. We have seen ourselves doing a lot to address the, that finding, as well as the asset verification. There were indications at the beginning of the few missions that were audited, that uh, at the time we were still uh, implementing our remedial actions. They were at the preliminary, at the, at the preliminary stages. We are thinking that um, what we have done so far could uh, go a long way in, I mean, we will be able to at least have some improvements. Uh, the, the submission of the uh, annual financial statements is 31 July. And when they are audited from July, from August, we believe we'll be ready to present documentation that will assist in the audit trail. That's how we say we have tried to put in measures that will ensure that our internal control environment is strengthened to starting with those things that were uh, uh, problematic areas. The two bases, which was asset verification, cash and cash equivalents, not ignoring other matters of emphasis uh, that have always been a thorn in our flesh. Uh, we are hoping that we will be able to improve in those areas. And indeed, when it comes to the program one, three, four, uh, the implications that will impact on progress. As I said, with regard to uh, 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 all the programs, and in particular, program two, which is our missions, essentially, the biggest problem is that not which caused by COVID or there's this adjustment. It is precisely the, 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 the perennial issue of, 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 of the ceiling that we are putting in a number of measures to mitigate and ensure that we are able to, to survive in, uh, or, or there with the assistance of, 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 of National Treasury. Uh, in, in, in highlighting some of the measures that we can put in place. In program, these other programs, in each of the instances in which I explained, the, the cuts, as we say, are on uh, goods and services. And the impact of these cuts is that uh, uh, we will have to, to, to do more with, I mean, with, with less, and then uh, we have identified uh, the fact that uh, we can piggyback on the fact that, among others, the known factor is travel. But of course, it is uh, exacerbated by the uh, un unfavorable foreign exchange rate, which is the most uh, 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 devastating element in our work because we, we, we operate on foreign currencies. So. As the CFO has presented, we 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 have th minus three three hundred and three seventeen million rand, and all what these cuts mean is that we have to work with what we have to to ensure that we we achieve all what we have to achieve. Most of our targets in program three, two, three, four, uh, uh, have not been uh, uh, directly affected. Uh, because they are of a qualitative nature rather than quantitative, and therefore their relationship with the cards may not be that uh, 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 difficult. However, the means by which or things like uh, tools of trade, uh, some services that uh, need to be uh, uh, rendered may suffer uh, where we may not be able to 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 contribute uh, enough money there. The issue of the 
I'm skipping those that uh, I, I think my boss will be able to assist us with. I'm not delegating, but I really believe that uh, there's some of them they will be best uh, uh, addressed at that level. The the issue of Israel, okay, of 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 of. Uh, uh, the Foreign Service Act. Y yes, we do have a plan, and and at an appropriate time, it will be able will be able to report back to the committee. There are specific time frames uh, by which we think uh, we will be able to say on this aspect, we will be able to complete it by a particular time. We have an implementation task team and it is, it is, uh, it is a, a, a cross-cutting kind of uh, 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 teamwork whereby each will deal with some aspect of the bill, of the act. And I believe that uh, we will be able to 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 make sure that the the coming into force is is done uh, at the time that we, we 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 are proposing. We must indicate that even though the we referred to the uh, fact that there is custodianship of properties is now vesting in our minister, but as uh, honourable members will know that the process and procedure of and over from one authority to the other is something that has to take place in a more systematic manner. Although it should be indicated that there was an arrangement that was uh, sanctioned many years ago by the Minister of Public Service and Administration of having uh, given the department some uh, responsibilities without this custodianship. But it is part of what our implementation is speaking to when it comes to that clause, there will be elements of the clause that will indicate how and when we should engage public works in ensuring that all those uh, immovable properties that are from the this office point of view are in the name of the department. How do we go about it? But the, generally the act is, is not a very long act. We have mapped it out and we have realized that through the teams that we have we have established, we can deal with all aspects of it, and we were advised uh, by the minister, of course, at uh, at um, uh, that at appropriate times when we we if something a milestone has been reached, we will still be able to 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 report back to the committee. Cut, cut on the capital projects, of course, the 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 the. the the baseline reductions was done by National Treasury, referring to the standard items. The department's role, therefore, is to say, based on this uh, amount that has been taken, priorities that we will attend to, for example, in this case, we have already mentioned that when it comes to ICT, we would like to ensure that all what needs to be done has to be done, more so that there's been a thorough work analysis, assessment, and, and, and directions that will enable us to be, to be spot on on what we need to do, starting with acquiring the, the basic equipments. Um, how much uh, virtual cost us? I may not have this answer immediately here, but uh, I believe it is something that could be determined. But I'm very uh, proud to, uh, to indicate that this task team was a very uh, strategic intervention. It came at a time, I shudder to think, based on the fact that we got guided in advance, long before the, the advent of um, COVID, to prioritize certain things, including acquiring licenses that today are enabling us to, 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 to work virtually. I'm telling you, honorable members, it could have been chaotic because of what you know historically on our ICT. It's one of those quick wins, but it is not enough, of course, as the, the, the plans and outcomes will be shared. Honorable members will be able to see what, what we mean. But actually, what we say is that the, the, 
allocations that are meant to service us in this area of ICT is, is what we have decided to keep on. And, and we are really very fortunate that this assessment that we are talking about was done on a pro bono basis, and therefore we didn't lose anything in, in having what we have today, which we are very proud to, to, to say we'll be able to implement and share the outcomes. I might stop here in order to, to untick some of the questions. I'll come back. Some of my colleagues or my boss may have noted some of the things, and I'll, I was just ticking those that were immediate to me. I thank the chair. You overlooked, you overlooked the issue of, um, of the documentation which we're supposed to submit on the skills of the persons that are responsible uh, for uh, property and other things at the department, which was raised earlier by Honorable Musani. We, we, we have all those uh, proof of qualifications to be precise were submitted um, because those uh, those cannot be sent virtually. They have to be packaged. We will submit them uh, immediately. In fact, as recent as last week, we 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 we, we were actually looking at those um, uh, what was required of us. The the, the other three weeks uh, um, time frame is still due next week. We are compiling the information. We would not really uh, forget or ignore what was requested of us, but because of the of the offsite work, etc., we needed to 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 collect all what needed to be done. We will submit it. Uh, we will have to uh, find the mechanism by which we have to physically submit to Parliament to the Portfolio Committee the documents. I'll no. come back to the, to no, the no, other no. answers. Honorable Minister. Unmute your mic, please. Hi, Minister, unmute your mic. Hey. Your mic, yeah. mic is a, it's a long arm, the mic, uh, Chair. Hi, uh, I thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, you and uh, one or two of the members will be the only ones who understand why I particularly thank the Honorable Mpanza for his very kind remarks. I know you will remember why. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> special, special thanks uh, uh, from me. Uh, Chair, let me uh, attempt to respond uh, to some of the questions uh, uh, that have been posed. Um, I, I must say, I thought uh, the Honorable Msani uh, will give the whip to Honorable Muela, uh, but she responded so kindly. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable Msani, Msani, thank you very much for uh, your question about the foreign exchange uh, fluctuations. I think this is a perennial problem which confronts all foreign uh, ministries throughout the world. And it's very difficult to persuade finance uh, uh, ministries and uh, treasury departments that if the value of the local currency changes, they should make adjustments in the budget. So all my colleagues are faced with the challenge of having to work within uh, the budget provided to them, and to make adjustments without uh, disadvantaging those uh, uh, who serve in our missions and the critical programs uh, that we want them to implement on behalf of South Africa. I do hope to uh, have tea. I've already spoken to the Minister of Finance so that uh, we might put some of these issues to him and see whether there's any means through which improved assistance might be provided uh, to the department. But uh, I don't, I'm not hopeful, having spoken to other colleagues who face the very dilemma uh, that confronts us uh, as South Africa. So we will have to make adjustments as the DG has so clearly and uh, 
uh, indicated as well as the CFO and ensure that we meet our obligations within the means available to us. On uh, the property management, I believe uh, uh, the DG has answered. Uh, it would be public works that the DG was referring to, not public service, uh, because there had been an arrangement uh, with public works uh, several years ago, but we now have, I think, a greater locus of control as uh, the Department of uh, International Relations and Cooperation. On uh, maintenance, uh, well, we do have a, a maintenance program, but it's on a rather uh, small uh, scale, given that much of the property utilized uh, by our officials is leased property, and it would be the owner, the landlord, that has the responsibility for maintenance. The area in which we have to do a lot of work are properties that are owned by South Africa, but which have not been maintained and which could be renovated for purposes of disposal. So we will have to work out a, a, a program and a proper plan uh, around that. And that's where the matter of the skills and uh, exactly who would uh, implement uh, uh, comes in. I just thought I should say on the African continental free trade area, colleagues uh, would recall that we had the objective of hosting a uh, extraordinary summit on the implementation of the free trade area with July 1 as the trading date kickoff. However, given um, the impact of COVID-19, we were not able to host the extraordinary summit in May, but it still remains part of the plans that we have under our chairpersonship of the African Union. We have proposed that it be held late in the air, and we will be putting this to the Executive Council that we hope to hold virtually in the next two weeks. And our president, the chair of the AU, will put the final proposal to the uh, mid-year coordinating meeting of the Bureau and the regional uh, economic community heads. So uh, we, we believe that uh, should we maintain the momentum uh, that had been achieved up to March uh, this year, and should we confirm the progress and the current negotiation among trade ministers, we will be able to have January as the trade kickoff date. So uh, we, we are working uh, to ensure that the free trade area agreement is actually uh, continued to be, continues to be a priority and that the uh, key uh, objectives we had set are achieved in this year with 2021 then being the beginning uh, of trade. Um, on on uh, Israel, the decision uh, of the governing party and of government was that we would downgrade our representation in Israel, and this has been done, and we maintain uh, uh, that downgrading. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there is a need to reflect as to exactly what the future should look like uh, in diplomatic and international law terms. And this is something that we are discussing in the department and will continue to be engaged with cabinet on, on this matter. On South Sudan, uh, the suspension is part of a decision all AU members took in 2018, that if you don't meet your obligations for a particular period, then your membership would be suspended. All member states agreed on this, and none are treated differently. You know that there's a differential in the annual contribution depending on economic status. That's where the concession is. Any country is a member for free. And uh, how one would say there are countries that still continue to generate revenue from their mineral uh, uh, resources, and while indeed they face a number of constraints, but the fact of the matter is that they have to meet their obligations. It's not a, a humanitarian a question. It's not one that you can escape. 
It is an agreement of the AU, and it's part, really, of the discipline of running an organization of the continent properly. We should respect and hold to the agreements and obligations uh, uh, that we have. On the matter uh, of Mozambique, I have reported to the committee before that this is a subject that is before the organ uh, of SADC. Uh, there have been meetings uh, of the organ uh, of SADC. As you know, the organ deals with matters of peace, politics, and security. Uh, a special uh, 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 meeting of the organ was convened by the current chair, Zimbabwe, and the sole subject was Mozambique. So it's not that it's, the issue is, is neglected or is not of concern to us as countries in the SADC region. We will work together to do all that we can, as we did with the piracy that hit our southern shores uh, over five years ago. We acted as one. South Africa played a key role. And uh, with respect to any threat, we will work uh, together to withstand uh, that threat to our peace and security as, as the region. The African Union as part uh, of the continent through its Peace and Security Council is of course alert to this matter, but the SADC organ would be the one that might table the issue if it requires further attention uh, by the continent. We have an international anti terrorism strategy that all of us are part of under the auspices of the UN uh, Security Council. And uh, I would think in South Africa, our security organs uh, are seized uh, with, with this matter. Um, I'm sure the Honorable Bergman would rather be a parliamentarian than an ambassador in a very difficult part of the world. Uh, so I will accept that uh, he was teasing us. Um, I absolutely agree with the Honorable Bergman, uh, Honorable Chair, that uh, we can do these reviews uh, uh, by virtual means and that uh, we shouldn't be having to travel as large teams to different missions across the world. Uh, we should use uh, uh, information technology uh, far better. Um, Sometimes, though, a visit might be rendered necessary by the documentation uh, that one studies uh, and, and receives. So I think that's a decision uh, that the department which is responsible and is the one that actually has to account to you as parliament, should they feel that there is a need for a physical presence, they would have to be able to explain to you why that need overrode the use of information communication technology. But I do think we can make better use of ICT, and we've certainly seen its impact uh, up to now. Um, we haven't as yet had handover, Mr. Uh, Bergman, of uh, properties. It is something in the stream of the planning we're doing with respect to implementation of the Foreign Service Act. It's only with that coming into law that we now have the legal instrument to allow for that uh, custodianship. I'll ask the CFO to answer on the repatriation and the cost uh, uh, question with respect to that. Um, on the matter of uh, um, Egypt, I believe uh, the reference uh, Mr. Bergman was uh, speaking of was to the uh, Grand uh, uh, Dam, the Ethiopian uh, uh, GERD project, and that is uh, negotiations which are underway uh, between Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia. And South Africa is playing a very important role uh, in that process, and certainly we hope agreement would be reached. The party's rhetoric has been very robust in the past few weeks. We have managed to ask them to stop the rhetoric that just enhances uh, emotion and tension and to really assist us by being reasonable as to what it is they seek uh, to achieve as the base framework for the collaboration uh, around the benefits deriving from the DAM. Uh, on 
Honorable uh, Moela, uh, Honorable Chair, many members have commended you for the uh, intervention you made at the beginning. I wonder if I too could ask for a copy, because uh, given that I was in the Libya UN meeting, I did not hear uh, these remarks, and it sounds like they were really wonderful. So I appeal that you email uh, a copy to us. Uh, I thank, uh, thank you, ma'am. I thank the Honorable Muela uh, again for commending the department. Uh, the team does work uh, uh, very hard, and the DG has indicated that we'll provide the report on ICT. I should say to honorable members that I've always felt that our country has immense talent in it, amazing uh, intellectual and research capacity. And we approached one of our research institutions to assist us in defining a path for modernizing our ICT. And it is from that process that we got the assistance that we are talking about uh, today. On the audit uh, uh, outcome uh, and audit review matters, I think I should say to the Honorable Muela that certainly we work very closely with the uh, uh, audit committee as well as with our internal risk. And uh, where there are areas of concern, they point these out to us. And we have developed a mechanism in the CFO and DG's office where we give attention to areas where it is indicated there may be heightened risk, and we should ensure that we proactively uh, respond to these areas to ensure that they don't become uh, a liability uh, for the department. At present, we have had improvements uh, in supply chain management, which had been one of the areas that had been highlighted uh, previously. We're paying close attention uh, to matters of irregular uh, expenditure and non-observance of the requirements of the PFMA. And when we spot any dereliction, we have now uh, asked and directed the Director General and the CFO that there must be effective consequence management. So uh, we are uh, really trying to enhance and improve our financial uh, administration. I think uh, the implications linked to the reduction in our budget have been spelt out uh, by the Director General. While indeed uh, we, we do anticipate some difficulty, but we are fully supportive of the interventions of the government to support the most vulnerable in our country to combat uh, COVID-19. Um, I think, uh, Honorable Ngorsi, that uh, the absence of travel that we've had over the last four months, I've been absolutely astounded at how much virtual international meetings one can do. I'm exhausted, actually, from the virtual, because it's perennial, it's uh, very detailed, you have to concentrate usually. Uh, and you can't escape because people can see you walking out of the room if you're not on the screen and so on. So uh, I have found that the use of virtual is keeping all of us as international actors extremely uh, occupied. Um, yes, certainly we had some uh, plans for spending on infrastructure. For example, we had hoped to begin constructing uh, the Chancery in Luanda, Angola. We now would have a pause uh, uh, with respect to that, but there are other projects that are underway, already committed, which uh, we would uh, certainly proceed with. Um, I think uh, the matter of contracts and who participates, uh, the CFO could, uh, could speak to that, and whether it's small business in South Africa, et cetera, acting outside the country. Um, I believe, uh, Reverend Mishwe, I have answered uh, the matter of uh, Mozambique that uh, you have raised. And let me say, if there's more to be said, we will come back to the committee to report it. Uh, you do know that this is an open forum, and uh, one has to just say the matters are within the SADC organ. Um, and, you know, that's, that's where uh, I would leave the matter uh, for now. Um, 
Mr. Mpanza, Mpanza, I believe DG again has committed uh, that he will address the requirement that you had uh, indicated to us on the ICT uh, plan. I hope uh, that one day when you visit the department, you will find that we've addressed uh, the likelihood of security breaches, uh, that we have modern servers in place, and that the hardware merits the nature of the department uh, uh, that we have. This is all work uh, that we hope to do, which we believe will lead to even greater improvement and to a better working environment uh, for our officials. Uh, those were the questions I noted, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Um, thank you uh, so much, um, Minister. Um, honorable members, uh, that was a detailed account on your on on your questions. Um, I don't think you you would have a a follow up. Uh, just one issue, Minister, on on Israel. I hear uh, that there's a decision on downgrading um, our representation there. And there's a view that um, that, that embassy uh, must be closed. Now, my question is, will that be viable? Because in my view, our offices there also uh, services Palestine, which we are told that is just um, not far from there. So do you think closing that embassy would do justice to the people of of Palestine if we are closing it uh, completely? Uh, I understand why uh, Honorable Musane uh, raised that particular issue of, 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 of Israel. So that's that's just one issue uh, from me. Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. As I said, um, what we uh, have to do is now, now that we've had experience of uh, several uh, months of uh, downgrade where there's no ambassador assigned to Israel, we have to look in terms of international law exactly what form uh, of uh, South African office or embassy we should have uh, in Israel. You're very correct uh, uh, with respect to the issue of Palestine. As you know, we have an embassy in Ramallah. If we don't have uh, an office in uh, Israel, it may very well impact on our ability to maintain the Ramallah office, which could impact our ability to influence and support in Palestine. But this doesn't affect the downgrade that we're proposing. There are also other countries that uh, do not have uh, an embassy in Tel Aviv, uh, but have an embassy perhaps located outside of Israel. Uh, which is set to service uh, 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 Israel. So these are all considerations that uh, my department and ministry must put uh, before cabinet so that we make a decision as to the final uh, uh, model that will be utilized. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. Um, Lubabalo. Oh, thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, Chair, thank you, Chair. I'm rising, Chair, to correct uh, the apologies. Uh, indeed, Chair, the mistake was on my side. Honorable Swartz did submit uh, an apology in a form of an SMS. However, I missed it due to the influx of messages which I receive on a daily basis. My apologies, Chair. Oh, okay. That is noted. Um, honorable members, um, for us as a committee to uh, do the adoption of the supplementary report of the committee, uh, the department has to ensure it tables its revised strategic plan and annual performance plans. 
and those of uh, ARF uh, before the committee adopts its report on Wednesday, which is the 15th of July, 2020. Without tabling uh, procedurally, the committee cannot adopt uh, the report. And um, the, the delays uh, on the infrastructure and capital projects of the department uh, it is clear from the presentation of the department that uh, it opted to let go of its target uh, on continuing with capital projects uh, this year. And uh, the implications uh, uh, of that, um, one, the department will delay the entering into force of the Foreign Services Act. Uh, because they opted to create time to be able to craft regulations, codes, and directives. And this is an understandable move. However, this will also delay its um, taking over the full custodianship of state-owned properties abroad. And the committee has been, you know, at pains trying to have the department to be ready and have a property management policy and properly skilled uh, personnel uh, in the built uh, environment. And this development is going to impact on the oversight plans of the committee. And uh, the PC will not be able to oversee the full implementation of the Foreign Services Act until it comes into force uh, after the minister sets a date for, for promulgation. <laughs> And um, um, the department uh, probably uh, could uh, submit a roadmap uh, with an implementation plan uh, stipulating time frames as to when each step um, will take place. And uh, the committee will need to monitor the pace at which the department is doing all the, that is necessary. Uh, to have the Foreign uh, Services Act uh, fully implemented. And uh, as, as, as other honorable members said and echoed uh, earlier on, uh, that we, we are noting and appreciating uh, the improvement uh, that we see, Minister, um, um, in the department and, and how things are done. And uh, the level of uh, understanding and that now your officials are moving in unison uh, there's no issue of two bulls in one crawl, as Honorable Bachman uh, stipulated initially when we started as a portfolio committee. So that spirit of collectivism, uh, it is evident because some of us uh, grew up in that environment. So when it doesn't arise in an institution, uh, it becomes very difficult uh, for us to whip or do the oversight. We, we really appreciate that. So uh, in those words, um, if there's no other question, uh, honorable members, I wish to adjourn our meeting. Is that in order? Okay. Thank you, Chair. Just the, CFO, the, the CFO on repatriation costs. Just to close it. Okay. Okay, Minister. Uh, CFO, yeah, we are going to respond on the repatriation. It's good to see Honorable Mulder smiling today. I must no, say. Thank you, Minister, and uh, thank you, Chair, Honorable Chair. The repatriation cost, uh, as I briefed the committee before, was that it was more of a recovery cost process and assisting Australian and South African abroad. And what we have then requested triple C during the period was to request funding for 12 flights, which already we have covered that part. Uh, what is remaining is basically to assist South African citizens to then be part of the uh, 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 aircraft uh, that are currently operating. In, indeed, they come at a high cost. Uh, based, or based on the commercial viability, which is the matter that we continue to monitor in respect of the cost. So the cost that we incurring is around about 26 million. We're currently finalizing the reconciliation with the uh, SAA in terms of how we're managing the project. Uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you.
very much, uh, Minister, on the issue of the repatriation. Uh, I feel uh, that there's there's some some kind of abuse by our citizens which are in other countries. I'm saying this because um, we are getting uh, messages and notices from other honourable members of other portfolio committees that there are people who are stuck in China, there are people who are stuck in South Arabia. Then the question which arises is where were these people when we started repatriation uh, of our citizens in different countries um, when this lockdown COVID thing started? So I think there has to be some kind of monitoring from the side of the department when we are assisting our citizenships, uh, citizens um, in, in, in those from those countries. Otherwise, we, we, the resources are going to be abused by, by our own citizens who are in those countries because you can't talk uh, stranded in, at this time of, of, of COVID-19 and, and, and the lockdown. It just does not make sense. So I think uh, there has to be a proper assessment of uh, the assistance of, of people, but we do send them to the embassies um, of, 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 of South Africa in those different countries so that they seek uh, help uh, there and, and be able to be assisted uh, by our own offices abroad. I, I thought it's important that I raise it here uh, with you uh, so that we monitor it very closely. So if there's no further ado, uh, comrades, your honorable members, uh, can we adjourn uh, the meeting? And uh, Babalo, how many minutes we have saved from this meeting? We're supposed to finish at 10. Eh? Is it an hour? Lubabalo? Where? Yes, most probably less than 10, Chair. We, I'm just saying we're supposed to finish at 10, the meeting. Isn't it? Yeah, yes, Chair. Yeah, so it's 13 minutes past nine, all of, almost an hour we saved. So please keep that so that when we have those meetings, that's yes, but the minutes were not out of. I am saying we've saved an hour, so that hour must be kept for us. Yes, please. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Minister, and your team uh, for joining uh, our meeting and also for responding to questions which were not part of the presentation. I know Honorable Bachman and Msane always abuses your presence in our portfolio committee. They ask things which are not in the presentation, but we allow it uh, so that uh, we get clarified on issues because knowledge is power. Uh, the more we are knowledgeable, the more we'll be able to understand what's happening uh, outside the borders of our country. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DG and your team. Uh, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <sighs> uh, Honorable Swan.